Everyone loves to share their photos. I've got some photos here that were shot by my grandfather. He shot them and developed them himself years and years ago. Many of them are still completely unfaded. I want the best way to preview these and show these off to people. You might have heard of an effect called the Ken Burns effect. Well, Ken Burns effect is a quick and easy push a button and it's done. But sometimes you'll end up zooming into an area you don't want to zoom into. So, I'm going to show you in Premiere Pro how we can easily use the same techniques but be able to control exactly where the camera is going. You're going to have documentary style dynamic slideshows by dragging and dropping. Let's go have a look. Here we are inside Premiere Pro and I've already imported a bunch of archived images that were scanned in, you see on the left hand side. To help you see these images, we can click on this button to show us an icon preview. And if I double click on the folder where I've got my images, you can see that I've got an icon preview. You can even drag and drop and change the order inside here. So it's an easier way to get this stuff ready to go. I'm going to close that window and go back to my regular view. And another easy thing to do is to automate these into a sequence. You see I've got a few of these uh, ready to go and you need to create a sequence first. So I'll create a new sequence. And at this point you can pick anything that you want. Where is this going? So I'm going to create a Blu-ray disc and I want this to start off as DVC Pro HD at 1080. So I'll click OK and then I'll select all of these images and in the project menu we have something called automate to sequence. And here we can take the sort order or a selection order depending on what we've got selected. We're going to put them sequentially or we can put them at unnumbered markers if we had them. We don't have any. We can do an overlay edit and overlay these 10 frames and apply a default video transition which is a simple dissolve. Now if I just want to show you quickly how we can get most of this done automatically. Click OK. There they are in the timeline. And up in the right hand side you can obviously see things aren't fitting well. We can easily select all of these clips, right click, and choose scale to frame size. So with just a couple of clicks, we've got all of our images in and we're ready to apply some quick pan and zooms. Very simple. Let me show you my previous example where I was putting these together. Let me show you specifically some of these kinds of effects that you're used to, these simple zoom in, zoom out. But let me tell you, if you're using an automated effect, you'll never get this where it zooms out from my grandmother's face to my aunt standing on the rock and then it holds for a certain amount of time for you to soak that in before it goes to the next shot. I want to stop here and stress this. That was a beautiful shot. I could have made that 20 or 30 seconds long. A simple automated effect will never interpret your beautiful creativity for these shots. Here's another one that an automated setting would never get. Let's get over here. Okay, here we are. We see some boots. And as it slowly goes through, we pan up from those boots. And there's my mom sitting there when she was a little girl. Fantastic shot. It snaps right to her face. Another one that you see a lot. If people take photographs of a large group of people, and when don't you do this? I mean, every wedding has the large group of people. If you simply do a pan from one side to another, every single person gets their moment of glory. Normally this image would have already passed and no one would even see who was there. And no one would see that these people are standing there dressed in their Sunday best with firearms. Hey, it's the old days, right? Okay, so how do we do this? Let's go back to our sequence. Remember, this was the one that we were creating. So right now we've got a bunch of images and they're just sitting there. Well. Remember we wanted this one to last longer? There are a lot of great tools inside Premiere Pro uh, that are professional. And I could easily hold the Command key on Mac, Control on Windows, and do a ripple edit very simply. But to a lot of people who want some simplicity, that might be too much. So I can just simply right click and choose Speed Duration. Right now it's a duration of three seconds. And if I wanted this to be a full 10 seconds, or let's even make it 13 seconds, it's important to click on this Ripple Edit Shift 
uh, the trailing clips. This simply means that if you want this clip longer, it's going to push everything down. And watch down here on the timeline, click OK, boom. Wow. That way you don't get your hands dirty. You don't have to learn about keyboard shortcuts and moving it around. If you're a professional editor, you could probably do it quicker, but I'm just showing you two separate ways of doing this. So we're at the beginning of the clip. Up in the top, if you look at our effects controls and scroll down here to motion, you'll see two settings, position and scale. That's it. That's all you need to ever worry about. What is the position and what is the scale? It looks like the camera is moving. It's not. It's just making the image larger or changing the position of the camera. So at the beginning of our clip, of this particular clip, and remember, I've got a little transition on here. Notice how it's fading in between the two. I don't have to have those, but I happen to have one. So if I click on a keyframe for position, a keyframe for scale, that's the beginning of my uh, animation. And at this point, I could change these. I could click inside here and move this around, change the scale, and drag it in. Remember, I'm trying to get to my grandmother's face over here. So I'm, and I could do this in the screen if I wanted to. Just sometimes you might accidentally select something you don't want. And this is an easy way to position that information just like that. And by the way, you can also copy and paste these and save these. And that's what I'm going to do. So that's the beginning of the clip. And as the clip moves out, if we change the scale, notice it creates a keyframe for us automatically. And at this point, we want to just zoom this out so that it has more of that frame, beautiful frame in there. Change the position up, zoom out. And at this point, I will come into my image and just drag this around. And that's all we've done. We've just created that simple effect to go from there to there. A couple of tips inside here. You'll notice that these keyframes are little diamond shapes. If you want this to ease in, select them, right click, and choose either Auto Bege or Ease In or Ease Out. I want these to ease in. What does that mean? That means instead of them digitally going from one keyframe to another, when they get to this point, you'll see it will just slowly ease into that final keyframe. Also notice that I didn't put these keyframes at the end. Remember that when I had this in my original, it zoomed to that position, and then it stopped. It let you take it in. Too many of these automated effects will remove that completely. You just get to see the final image, and then it's gone. Here you've got complete control. So once I've set up that information, if I right-click on motion, very important, I'm not right-clicking on the word position or on the word scale. I'm right-clicking on motion, save preset and I can name this anything I want. It's also important that you have scale selected. So let's call this zoom out, slow hold, okay? What scale will allow is if I do this to a 13 second clip and then save this and do it to a 30 second clip, it's going to put it in the same relative position instead of stopping at whatever this is about 10 seconds. So I'll click OK, and over here on the left-hand side, we've got presets. So all I have to do is just take this and drag it onto something else. So let's go to another one here. There's that one. Zoom out, slow hold. I'll drag it over here, drag and drop it. And now we've got zoom out, slow hold, just like that. In fact, I could select a whole bunch of these and apply the same thing. But you probably don't want to do this. You want to mix them up. and. Uh, create a simple look. So I wanted to make sure you understood that there's lots of power in Premiere Pro, not only for professionals. I mean, people are making feature films with it, but it's a fantastic tool to use to create these kinds of animations. By the way, the same keyframing can be done in After Effects just as easy. And I want to finish up by talking about the Ken Burns effect. You know, the Ken Burns effect is a term that people have been using for years, but Ken Burns himself has said, one of the most important influences he had was the National Film Board of Canada. Hey, I'm Canadian, so I got to give a shout out. That the movie City of Gold was done in, the in 1957. And if you go and watch that online, it's free to watch, watch some of these gorgeous pans and zooms. And it was done long before computers and long before motion cameras. So let's go and create some dynamic slideshows, pull those shoe boxes out, and share some of your fantastic memories.